Hi pilots, um, this is gonna be a quick video on uh, reusing the AR, uh, Spectrum AR636B uh, receiver um, that does come with uh, AS3 and SAFE. Okay, so um, E-Flight uh, use these in a number of, of their aircraft, uh, both jets and, and props. Uh, they still use that today. It's a really nice receiver. It's a six channel. Uh, actually, it does have a seventh channel, which is this uh, uh, program uh, bind port, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times this comes with uh, an aircraft uh, and, and basically you just uh, bind and fly, right? And uh, so I've, I've had the occasion to reti retire a couple of aircraft and, and, and here's one now. Um, and so I have some of these receivers and I'd like to put them in other planes, right? So. Um, what I want to do is <clears throat> show you the uh, transmitter here. The way I fly is that uh, basically I'm going to use this switch here. Okay, and you, you can you can choose to to set it up however you want. But the way I typically fly and the way that I'm going to set this up is that I'm going to have this this is a three position switch where normally uh, off is is there's no gyro, there's no um, or AS3X and, and there's no safe. I can put it in the middle position, which is AS3X, and that's typically what I fly with, okay? Uh, and then if I get in trouble, safe mode. I can flip this and, um, you know, put it into safe and then basically let go of the sticks and the aircraft will right itself, hopefully before it goes into the ground, okay? And, and that has saved many of my aircraft, right? So anyways, that's what I want to do um, in this receiver uh, you know, which is unlike the AR630 and the 637Ts, which um, you program them through the uh, transmitter, okay? They're a little more, uh, I guess, newer and advanced receivers. This receiver, um, you, you can't program it through, through the transmitter, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm gonna show here today is how to program this um, using some tools that are out there. Um, and basically you can get the, the basic functionality of AS3X and, and, and SAFE, right? So um, on SAFE, uh, all I'm really using, like I said, is, is the level. Um, and then on the, um, on the limits, on the roll and elevator, elevator limits, um, there is ability to adjust those. Uh, typically what I do is I, I set those pretty high um, from, from the default. Otherwise, if you're in safe and you're trying to turn the aircraft, it can take a long time because of those limits. Um, just uh, limit how far you can, can bank the aircraft, if you will, when you're trying to turn. So anyways, we'll go through that and, and, and see how we can set those limits. The other thing is that, and maybe I just haven't figured it out yet, but with this receiver, I only have the ability, or at least I've only been able to figure out how to set it up as AS3X and then switchable to safe. I have not figured out how to turn off AS3X and SAFE, okay? So, um, you know, and that works for me because I want to have AS3X as a default and then uh, SAFE when I get into trouble. So that's that's the goal, okay? And basically it's going to go into this aircraft here, this um, uh, F9F, okay? Um, the other thing is that this receiver, at least from my experience, it will not work in like a Delta type of aircraft, okay? Um, it's expecting that you'll have a traditional aircraft where you have ailerons and you have the elevators uh, back there, right? Um, but if you have a kind of a Delta wing where you've got, you know, essentially elevators acting as a uh, ailerons and elevators at the same time, uh, I, it didn't seem to work for me. So <clears throat> the caveat with this is it needs to be in, in, a, in a kind of a traditional uh, aircraft with traditional controls. So next step is we'll get into um, the software. I'll list out um, the software that you need. Um, there's the cable that you need. And uh, there's a, a really good document that the, um, the person that built this uh, programming tool for the 636 uh, wrote this really good document. There's a lot of really good information in there. What I'm doing here is just to kind of give a, a, a quick uh, quick and dirty, how do you program this for, for the functionality that I mentioned? Um, but if you want to, um, you know, definitely go through that document and see if there's other things that you might want to do or, or change. Okay. So we'll get into, uh, what those, uh, those, those tools are that we need. 
Then we'll walk through um, programming this and then final step, we'll test the aircraft to see that um, we do have AS3X and uh, safe working, okay? Okay, so let's get into um, the tools that we need to do this programming. So let me start with a, um, the Spectrum uh, programming cable. So basically this just plugs into your PC. It's got a USB and uh, it's got a like a servo connector on the other end. And this allows you to um, essentially program uh, the receiver, right? So basically you plug this into the programming port there, number one, and uh, allows you to get access to the receiver, okay? and, and use the, the tools um, that we're going to use, okay? So, <clears throat> um, this, is, this is the URL. Uh, basically, you, you can get it from uh, Horizon. Uh, I see that right now it's on back order, but I've seen it at other sites, okay? Uh, but I'll, I'll list the, uh, uh, the link, the Horizon link uh, in, in the text below, but you know, you can get this uh, from any uh, other retailer, okay? Um, going back to this, so the, these, the, the other things that we need is we need this uh, Spectrum Programmer, okay? Um, this is a tool that, that uh, they have on the Spectrum site. Uh, and let me just walk through that real quick with you. Paste that there. Okay, so um, it's this uh, beta programmer. Um, and essentially what you need to do is go get this right? You click that, it'll download uh, an installable program onto your um, laptop. You need to install it. And then once you're finished, um, you'll get something like uh, this Spectrum Programmer. Okay. And we'll pull that up. Okay. And this is it right here. Okay, so it looks like this. We'll come back to that. Okay, back to the list. Um, we need, <clears throat> you can get the, the programming guide. This is the guide I was talking about that walks you through, um, the, it, it walks you through the Spectrum Programmer and this programming tool that um, that was developed for, for the um, 636B. But this is the link to that. Uh, and we're going, I'll just show that here. Um, but, but I'm just going to, um, do a video on, on a portion of the information in here, um, just to, to, to kind of get, uh, you know, a qu quick video of setting this thing up and then to actually get this tool, uh, it's this, this other one here, uh, bear with me one second. So this is what the tool looks like here. Okay. So again, <clears throat> I'll put all of these in the, uh, in the link below of the video. Okay. And you'll have all those tools. So that's what we need to get uh, uh, started with. Um, one note, this programming tool, basically you just download it and you copy it into a directory and you just run it. So I'll just show you this. You don't, you don't have to install it uh, at all, okay? So <clears throat> uh, basically it, it just creates a, you create a directory and then this is really the tool right here, okay? So, um, you'll ha just have to click on this, double click it, and it'll run this, right? So it we won't show up in the start menu or anything like that, but it runs just fine. Okay. All right. So we'll get started with the, um, the programming here. Okay. So we'll start the programming part. Um, basically it's three steps. Uh, we're going to use the spectrum programmer, uh, to, uh, create an SRM file which um, basically has the, the characteristics of, of our receiver here, our AR, AR636B, okay? Um, we'll save that SRM file, and then we're going to import that into this model builder file. And in here, we'll set up all the safe uh, settings and all those sorts of things, okay? And then we'll save that SRM file, SRM file again. And then we'll come back to, to this one and we'll use that SRM file to update our receiver with the settings that we wanted for, for safe, okay? And then that will be it for the programming. So <clears throat> let me get started with this then. Um, I've got the, the, uh, the program up and running. Um, you wanna plug in the, plug in the um, USB and 
cable into the PC and also plugging in the, the um, servo connector into the uh, bind and program in the receiver, okay? Um, then the next step is <clears throat> up here in the upper right, uh, we're gonna hit the power cable button and then it's gonna ask you it, to be sure that you have no other battery source plugged into that receiver. Otherwise, it could it could damage your your, your computer or your, or your receiver. So in our case, we're just getting power over that USB cable, so we're good there, so we can just hit power. And we this, uh, this model setting device would come up and does not match what's on the computer. So here what you wanna do is use the device settings. So basically we're telling it, I want you to read the settings from the receiver itself, okay? So we'll hit that. And now we've got, uh, if we come to models here, we've got a new model that's defined in this programmer, okay? And this is, this is, uh, this is our, our receiver, okay? So <clears throat> here we want to, um, we can go to edit and we can give it a name. Uh, AR636B with safe, okay? Because that, that's ultimately what I want this file to hold, okay? Um, I'll save that. And then what I wanna do is I want to export this and create my SRM file. Okay. And so I've got my F9F AR636B with safe, and I'm gonna save that. Okay, so now that's step number one, okay? Okay, now that we've got our SRM file, the next step is we need to program that SRM file um, for safe. Okay, so we're gonna bring up the second program here the safe model builder, okay, and let me just keep it small. It doesn't resize, okay, and all right. So first step is we need to find our SRM file, and let's see. I think this is the one that we had, and let me bring that open, okay. So now we're going to work on that file that we created from our receiver, okay. Um, and the first step is uh, mounting of the receiver. Okay, so this is very important. Um, basically what this is, is you need to tell the receiver how it's mounted in the aircraft. Okay, so in my case, let me move this. In my case, I'm gonna put it in this, in this aircraft and all the servo connections are back here and the batteries uh, at the front. So what I wanna do is I want the servo connections uh, towards the back, right? And then I'll put the antenna towards the front, right? So you can see it there. So that's the orientation I want in the aircraft, okay? Um, you can put the receiver in any orientation. You can, you know, put it with the, the servo connections towards the front. You can put it, if I can get it to fit there, you can put it in there like this. You can put it on the side. I've done that before. You can even put it upside down if you want, right? Um, any orientation that you want. But um, once you figure out where you want to put it, uh, that's what you need to um, program uh, in this uh, safe model builder. So that's the orientation that I want right there. Okay, so I'll come back over here. And basically in, in that orientation, I've got the, the pins of the aircraft um, pointing towards the back, and, and you can see that right here. Hopefully you can see that, that in this case, it's already there as the default where the pins are pointing towards the back of the aircraft, and the antennas here are pointing towards the front of the aircraft, right? Um, and, and that's already checked here down here, right? But let's say, for example, I switched it around and now I've got the antennas pointing to the back and, and the um, servo uh, connections to the front. Um, you can see the orientation with, re with respect to, to the aircraft, okay? The other thing is <clears throat> I don't have my receiver upside down, so the label is pointing up. So I've got pins towards the tail, label towards the sky. 
It's very important that you get this right or your safe will not work properly. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm gonna to go to the switch setup. Um, in my case, uh, what I use is, um, I just use the second one here. By default, this is checked, okay, but that's not what I use. I wanna use the, the switch on the, um, on the, on the transmitter. Um, there's a, an older style of setting up the switch for safe uh, in, in, in their models. If you, if you want to explore that, you can read that document that I was talking about. Um, I'm not going to go through this document, but this is very helpful. If you go through this document here, uh, it explains a, a lot more than what I'm going to do on the video. So I'm just going to explain how I set it up, uh, on my aircrafts. And then if you want to do something different, please refer to that document. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to use this one here. Um, and I'm going to set up my switch to enable AS3X and SAFE to be on channel 7. So recall that this receiver um, has, has six ports on it, right? But this one, this uh, bind and program, actually is a, se a seventh channel on, on the um, uh, 636B. Okay, so that's what I'm going to ultimately uh, assign as my, my toggle switch on my transmitter. Okay, um, then the other, the, other, the other options down here, and, and you can use any of these channels, right? I'm just choosing to use uh, channel 7, but for AR636B, uh, 7 is the maximum, right? So you could use 5 or 6 or 7, okay? 8 or 9 obviously aren't possible because it doesn't have those channels. Okay, the, the receiver doesn't. On this one down here, um, this uh, allows safe functionality to be turned on and off through the bind process. Again, that's part of uh, kind of their legacy way of doing safe. Um, I'm not gonna set that up, so I leave this one unchecked, okay? And then I leave this one checked here um, so that I can switch back and forth, okay? So that's all we need right there. Um, we're going to flight modes <clears throat> and this, this has to do with, um, uh, how you assign the flight modes to the, um, trans, uh, to the transmitter. Okay. So again, in my case, I can get this to stand here. I want, I want, actually what's going to end up happening is on this three position switch, this position and this position are both going to be um, AS3X, and that uh, maps to flight mode one and flight mode two. Where I want safe is on what's called flight mode three, which is in this position here, okay? So I'm going to go change this, and, and, and I've changed this. Um, uh, this is, it, it's still set up from last time that, that I'd set this up, but by default, it's got flight mode one set up, um, and depending on how you want to set up your switch, you can go with that. Or if you want to do the switch like I did, I set it up over here. Okay. Um, so to enable safe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, clicking this one here. Right. Um, and I want the self leveling, uh, and the, um, the bank limits. Okay. Um, this automatically comes on. Um, so this is going to, again, this is going to level the aircraft. It'll do that for you. And it's going to limit how far you can bank or pitch the aircraft as well. Okay. That's what this one does. This next one is a throttle to elevator mix. Uh, really don't like this feature. Um, they use it on some of the beginner models. Basically, they will um, uh, pitch the aircraft up as you increase the throttle. And usually that starts kicking in at about 50% of the throttle. So for a beginner, you know, if you're, you're trying to get off the ground and keep the airplane flying, you're, if you're past 50%, now that airplane, airplane is climbing on you and, you know, you start, you know, losing, uh, you know, it's getting further and further away. Anyways, I don't like that feature at all. I don't turn it on. If you want to mess with it, you know, go ahead. Panic. Um, basically, you can set up a, a button on your transmitter so that, you know, you can push this button and it'll, it'll self-level the aircraft. I don't want that. I want to be able to control it with the switch, okay, um, so I don't enable that. On the bank limits, 
um, these are the limits that I set, which is uh, 75, 75 on the aileron, 50 uh, up, and then or 75 up and 50 down. I think the the standard limits are lower than this. Okay, I think it's like maybe 50, 50, and and 50. Uh, I didn't change the down. The problem with the lower limits is, um, like if you're trying to turn in safe, your turn's gonna take much longer because the, the aircraft can't roll as far, right? So, so, so the turn gets stretched out. Um, I like the higher limits um, because I feel comfortable with that. I mean, it's up to you as to, to what you feel comfortable, but you, I guess you can always come back and reprogram this as if this is, um, you know, if, if, if you've got this set too low, okay? so. <clears throat> that's it this is basically where you're setting up uh the safe uh behavior here okay um we'll go to the next one which is the panic mode which again i don't use so that's disabled the throttle to elevator mix uh i don't have that enabled so i'm not changing anything here okay um and then they've got uh a, this advanced setting where you can tweak um some of the the gains uh that sort of thing um, this is how quick, uh, the safe, um, uh, software is going to react, uh, it, it, you know, when it's, when it's flying the airplane for you. Um, I found that, you know, for the most part, I haven't had to change the defaults at all. So I just leave them. Okay. Um, so I really don't have to change any of these. Okay. Um, so that's it. Those are all the different, uh, things that you can do in programming the safe. So I'm going to save this, okay? And so this is gonna save, this is gonna update that SRM file that we created. So now it's programmed with safe and it's programmed so that it expects the receiver to be installed in the aircraft just like this. This is very important. If you don't install it in the aircraft like this, safe is not going to work for you. It's gonna be unpredictable what, what it does, okay? Um, that's it for that one. So let's jump back over here. So that's step number two that we finished. <clears throat> okay, the next step, so that we finished uh, programming uh, the, the safe on the file, the SRM file. Next step is, the third step is, we're going to put that file um, back into the receiver. Um, the problem is that when we import this file into the Spectrum Programmer, it's going to potentially have an issue because we've got a file and a receiver both with the same serial number, but they have two different configurations. So what we're gonna do is we're going to delete this model that we created earlier in the, um, the programmer. Um, and so let me do that. I'm gonna come here. You have to click off of the, the model that you created, right? Select another model. And then when you come over here to more, your delete is available. So we're gonna delete that one, okay? And to get rid of it, we need to go to the trash and we need to empty the trash, okay? And so that guy is, is completely gone now, okay? So now, okay, so before I do the import, uh, next step is to do the import of the file that we created in, in that other tool. I want to make sure that I, I disconnect um, the receiver, right? I don't want to have it plugged in. And I've also deleted the, the old profile that we had in there for, for the receiver and um, erased it from the trash. So now I'm going to click on the import and I'm going to open that file that we created in the other tool. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and I'll plug in the USB cable here. And let's go back here and hit the power. And what we should see another dialog box pop up, pop up and we did not. Okay, so now we're going to go import our file, and I'm going to plug the receiver into the PC, and we're going to 
connect the power and after you hit the power cable button, you should see a dialog box that says, do you want to use the device settings or the computer settings? If you see that, you select the use the computer settings. What that will do is to take this um, SRM uh, configuration that we just imported and push that to the receiver. So let's see if that happens. No, it did not. Okay. But I think that it did push it to the receiver, okay? And I will show you how you can tell if uh, SAFE is, is running, okay? Um, but that's it. That's basically the last step is, is basically pushing that SRM configuration into the, um, to the receiver. And then the receiver um, should have SAFE and AS3X uh, enabled. So the next step is um, going to um, the receiver and doing the bind. Okay, um, so here I've got the receiver here and I'm going to put it in the position that I want it to be in the aircraft. Okay, um, so I want the, the leads, uh, servo leads going to the back and the antenna to the front. Very important that you get that straight. Okay, um, so let me pause here. Okay, so here I've got the bind plug. I don't know if you can see it, it might be a little hard. This thing right here is the bind plug inserted into the first port. And I'm gonna, buy, first thing is to bind the receiver to the transmitter, okay? So I've already got a, a profile for this uh, uh, F9F. And going to go down here to the system setup. And we'll do that. And then we'll come down here to the bind, wherever he's at. Okay, and we'll, the receiver is already ready to be bind with that bind plug in. Um, when you power it on, you'll have an orange flashing light. So you come over here and you're ready to hit the bind uh, selection here. But the transmitter needs to be somewhat, you know, three, four feet away from the, the, um, the receiver or the bind will fail. So let's see if we're far enough away. Binding. Bind failed. Oh, not far enough away. Okay, I'm going to move the transmitter um, pretty far away from the receiver so the bind will be successful. But what I want to do is have you focus on the control surfaces of the aircraft when it binds for the first time. It will go through two cycles of moving the control surfaces. If it goes through two cycles, you know that SAFE is enabled. If it only goes through one cycle, then only AS3X is set up on the receiver. All right, so here we go. So I don't know if you could tell there, but it went through two cycles. On the um, on the boot up, and that indicates it's safe is working. So let me pull the bind plug out, and we'll do. Um, well, actually, we'll do testing right now. Okay, so let's stick the battery there, and um, I've already. Let me just show you the transmitter. Let me show the um, transmitter here. So what I did is remember we had channel seven set up as the um, uh, the switch to turn on uh, AS3X or uh, safe. And so the way you set that up is you come here, we're gonna go to channel assign. Oops, let's go to channel assign, channel assign. And in this one, what I want is we're, we're interested in port number two or seven, and it's a AUX2. And what I want to do is I want to assign it to this switch right there that has the label on it. And that's actually the B switch on this transmitter. Okay. So I've got that set up. Okay. Um, so now whenever I flip this B switch, it should be able to turn AS3X and safe all on and off. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's back out. And <clears throat> what should happen here is the the first two positions on the switch here, um, these two should be AS3X. So in, in this position, 
and this position should be AS3X mode. Okay, so for AS3X to work, uh, you have to have the throttle pass 20% initially. Okay, so let me do that. The other thing to remember is make sure when you turn that throttle on, there's nothing around the intake. I have had a bind plug go through there and through the motor. It wasn't pretty for either the motor or the bind plug. So just be careful that nothing's around there. And let me turn off the um, throttle cut and see if I can do this without this thing flying across the room. All right, here we go. Okay, so you only need 20%, so that should be enough to enable the AS3X. So what I'm gonna do is to rock the aircraft and you should hear the servos going uh, to compensate for, for like wind and stuff. So hopefully you can hear that, okay? And now let me switch it to safe. The AS3X, uh, you won't be able, you, you can hear it, but you won't see much deflection on, on the um, control surfaces because they go right back to neutral uh, almost immediately. But safe, you should be able to see. So we'll turn on safe. Okay, so now as I, as I roll the aircraft, you can see that this aileron is coming up and that aileron is going down. Okay, and if I reverse it, you'll see this one coming up and you see this one has gone down, right? Okay, so that's the counteract the roll. And then for the elevator. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that when I had uh, safe enabled, the AS3X I think was, was working okay, but when I had safe enabled, the elevator was going opposite to what I thought it should go, right? So if, if, the, if you take the aircraft and you pitch it up, um, you should see the elevator go down, right? It's kind of hard to tell here, right? Uh, right there. Now, if I pitch it down, I should see the elevator going up, okay? So you do see that in this case, it does go up a little bit right there when I have safe on. So I've got that sorted out now. Um, but basically what I had to do is the, the elevator was reversed when SAFE was controlling the aircraft. So <clears throat> I had to go back into the Spectrum Programmer and go into the um, Surface Setup, okay? And clicked on the elevator. And I did have to check this reverse, okay? Right there to get the elevator um, reversed when SAFE was controlling it, okay? So this is when the receiver is controlling it, right? So I saved that, and then what I had to do was to um, unplug the battery, right? Unplug the battery, uh, plug our, our little programming cable back into um, the receiver, okay? And then when I did that and I applied power, then I got a little dialog box that said, um, uh, the settings have changed, do you want to use the, um, the device or the, um, the computer settings? And I clicked on the computer settings because I wanted this reverse to get put into the receiver, okay? So I did that and the safe was working, uh, you know, like it is here where I've got, you know, the right roll here, okay? And then um, if, if I'm pitching the aircraft down, you see the elevator go up and, and, and likewise for if, if it's going uh, up, you see it pitch down a little bit there, okay? So safe was working fine, but then on my transmitter here, uh, my elevator was now reversed, okay? So what I had to do there is go into the servo settings here um, on the transmitter. So the issue was with the transmitter and not safe. And then here I had to just go in and reverse the, um, the elevator setting here, okay? And now my transmitter is working fine where <clears throat> I, can, I can give it up elevator and it goes up. I can give it down elevator, it goes down. And also when I give it a uh, roll, I'm rolling to the right, that works, and roll to the left, that works, okay? So now I've got safe working and, I've, uh, and the roll and the, and the pitch.
okay? Um, so that's it. Uh, that, that's all there is to, to programming this. Um, if you have any more questions or, or you know, it, it's definitely a good idea to go through um, this document here, okay? Uh, it, it gives you just a wealth of information uh, on how to set this up. If you want to do something different than what I did, okay, um, I definitely refer to that. So hopefully this has been helpful um, to, to reuse a AR636B, okay, um, and, and get you at least AS3X and uh, safe on a um, on a switch here that you can fly with uh, and uh, reuse that uh, that old receiver. Thanks for watching.